Hey guys and gals, we are test driving Kerpat and I'm southbound on I-5 in Reading and I didn't even get out of the driveway of the Freightliner before the check engine light came on which is not the problem that it's at Freightliner for as we have gone round and round and hunted this stuff down. The uh, I am noticing that the voltmeter is rock solid to the right of the center mark on the gauge and it's never been like that. So I think they have resolved the problem with the tranny knock on wood, but God only knows what this check engine light is. We're going to drive it maybe to Anderson, maybe all the way to Red Bluff and back, and then we're going to take it back and say, well, we're still here. So it does drive nice. I'm, I'm going 65, and God, it just drives like a dream. But why is the check engine light on? That is the question, and we'll have to see. So here you go. Well, it's the Saturday, I think the last Saturday in July, and I'm just north of Flag City on J4 in San Joaquin County. I had to come down and pick up the new router that Nomad, Nomad had sent me the wrong one, so they sent me a new one, which I have, which is much, much better. Um, the coach. I got a call. I, I took it for a test drive. Well, you saw it. And the, when I got almost down to Anderson, the uh, check translate came on. It went into limp mode. You already saw that the check engine light was on even before I drove out the driveway. Now the problem, which is unrelated to everything else, appears to be the, uh, there's a device, I can't think of the name of it, but it cools the turbocharged air. I'm gonna have to go, somebody's goddamn walking down here. Both. Dude, I'm not gonna fucking help you. <sighs> ah, shit. In the, uh, in the opening of the scene, you saw a whole bunch of RVs, old ones, of people down on, the, on their lot. And I had parked behind them I thought far enough and somebody started walking uh, towards me. So I pulled, oh, well, as you saw, in front of them, and the goddammit, the same guy who wants to come out and hassle me for money or something, and I'm just not going to put up with it. So I'm sorry if that makes me a hard ass, and I don't know what to tell you. Goddammit, I'm homeless just as much as he is. So, um, anyway, uh, the, uh, hold on a second here, that door needs to shut. I got, a, I got a call last night from Courtney at Freightliner who basically said I need to speak to Dayside Supervision, the head of the, uh, uh, the head of service because uh, they're stuck uh, again and um, what happened was that the um, the piece leaked and the leak caused the turbocharged air to get too hot which triggered a check engine light which then once you drove it for a bit triggered limp mode so they fixed what the original problem was this is something else entirely I guess it's just either serendipitous or just yet more incredibly horrible luck that we've had since the fire anyway I'm going to talk to the head of service Monday and we're gonna get some type of game plan here because uh, we may end up just leaving Anderson driving to Stockton staying in a hotel to start to get Marie her care and whenever the coach is ready we'll just drive back up and pick it up 
So uh, I, I I think that I suggested that to Marie uh, this morning. So she's going to contemplate it today, and we'll see what the story is. But it's been over three weeks. This I this is. All already cost us at least $6,500 and I don't see it ending for any less than eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. We're already at least $16,000 deep into this. Buying the coach, which I thought was a good deal, turned out to be just a horrific decision that's cost us way too much money. It is just incredibly disappointing. So that's where we sit. I'm heading back. There's my good boy, God love him. I got him some Arby's. So we're gonna head back. So that's where we sit for now. So unless something good happens on the way back, I'll probably check in with you tomorrow once I've talked to Freightliner.